I'm Kurt Coleman, and I worked with Sharif Tolba on a secret sharing project. Um, the project involves implementing a security system that is capable of guarding and protecting um, valuable items. In the real world, valuable items are usually protected with vaults or safes, and, um, and a very primitive idea would be to use a tangible key to actually unlock these vaults or safes. But as you may know, that's not a very secure method um, because a key can be stolen, anything tangible can be stolen or duplicated. Um, a more sophisticated method then would be to allow higher up individuals to memorize a certain password or a passcode that they could enter on a keypad. Um, and again, this has problems because, of course, um, a passcode can, can be leaked. Uh, any kind of knowledge that someone has to remember can obviously be leaked, it can be taken from them with their by force or whatever. Um, so this, this project involves using an easy 430 Kronos watch um, and instead of actually giving anybody uh, valuable information to have to remember, instead they'll just have to remember a specific shaking sequence to perform on this watch, which will then ultimately unlock or actuate the vault lock. Um, that they want to unlock. Um, now this is unlock a lot of, unlike a lot of biometric techniques which involve um, using an individual's biology such as let's say a retina scan um, or uh, a voice recognition of some kind. Um, instead this doesn't require any kind of bio biology of a person and, and this can actually be beneficial because uh, maybe someone wants to be promoted to gain access to this vault and so all they need to do is actually just memorize a shaking sequence rather than program their specific biology into a system, which may be actually pretty complicated. Um, so the way the system works is that once the shaking sequence is performed correctly, it will send a piece of a full password to a server, and the server will be responsible for actually actuating the lock. Once the server gets the full password, it'll, actu it'll actuate the lock. Um, and so as we can see here, we have our server graphical user interface. And as you can see, it's currently displaying that the, the vault is in a locked state. Um, the way this works is that there are a few items on this user interface. The first there you can see is a serial port um, field where it just lists the port number that is being used. Um, we do have an access point connected to the computer and that is what uh, uses, what takes or transmits the wireless information uh, from the watch to the server and vice versa. And then back to the application here, we also have a status field which will update uh, periodically to let us know the status of the event as it occurs. Um, there's also a number of different fields displaying the partial passwords as each watch is performed the shaking sequence correctly, the partial password will be sent to the server, and that partial password will be displayed in those fields. Um, again, once the server receives all those partial passwords, the overall password will also be displayed at the bottom. And in order to get this uh, demonstration going, we can start out by showing what a shaking sequence looks like when it is done incorrectly. And the way that works is first we're going to start the server and by start listening what that's going to do is it's going to uh, start uh, the connection between the server application and the access point. And so once that's done we can then click the button to retrieve the partial passwords which um, basically just creates a connection between the access point and the server application. And once we have done that, you'll notice that the server displays the packets that it's um, receiving through the access point. Uh, the first few numbers there are, are just header uh, information, and the last three are the payload of the packet, um, which extends more as uh, more information is, is needed to be sent. And you'll kind of see that as we go. So. At this point, we can now show the, the, the EZ430 Kronos watch here, and it is in the ready state. 
and we can cycle it to the access requests state which just means that this is where we can send a request to the server so that we can enter our shaking sequence which will then ultimately send the password to the server. So in order to access request we can press the down button here and you'll notice it's flashing an icon there to let us know that it is sending and transmitting a request to the server. And if we look at the server screen here um, you'll notice the status updated to say that the, it is waiting for our taps now and by taps it just means the shaking sequence. And so now on the watch um, it has updated through a uh, through a sync bi-directional communication to let us know now that it is time to enter our shaking sequence. So I'll do that now. And of course I didn't do that correctly on purpose and so you have an error message displayed on the watch. Um, now this error message is basically to to, sh to represent that the watch is now in a lockdown state. Um, just as a preventative security measure we've designed the watch to go to this state so that it cannot be used again for a certain amount of time um, which is desirable in order to prevent any kind of security uh, breaches there may be. Um, so now we're going to reset the watch and we did implement a way to reset the watch so that we could now demonstrate a successful shaking sequence and so I'll do that now. And so now the watch is in a reset state and we'll get the server back into a ready state as well. And now we are access requesting access to the server again. And just a few seconds, and now this are, the watch is ready to have the shaking sequence be entered into it. So I'll do that the correct way this time. And of course, it doesn't always work the way we hope, so I'll quickly try to reset. So I'll just give that a couple seconds and it'll come right back to the go state. Is it the easy sequence? Alright. So this sequence now, I mistakenly entered the wrong sequence. So it is actually a very simple sequence and it looks like this. And as you can see, the watch updated with OK. It actually changed states just now, but it was a successful shaking sequence. And the server will show you here the partial password that was transmitted to the server. And you can see now that the server is displaying welcome to represent the fact that we have gained access to the vault. Now, the server is set up and structured so that it can work with multiple watches, each containing a part of the password. Um, for this demonstration, uh, we're only showing one watch, and this is because of simple, well, because of complexities of trying to get this all to, to work together, integrated together, and also because of simple time, uh, time restrictions. But uh, this is the project that we worked on, and hope you enjoyed it.